All right, Brian, nice to meet you over the, over Skype here. Uh, it's just great to touch base and kind of chat about youth ministry. And um, so, yeah, just let, tell me a little about yourself. I know you live in Seattle now. I know you've had a long youth ministry kind of history. But yeah. uh, but what as, as a networker for youth leaders, why would you tell them to keep coming back to Dare to Share? Not just one year, but like why is year after year uh, a good thing? Yeah, I am. I- as a youth pastor for for 16 plus years, um, one of the things that was kind of my, a core conviction for myself was was I think similar to what Dare to Share's DNA is, and that is evangelism actually sparks discipleship. I think the church for a long time has had the the mindset that the end product of discipleship um, is evangelism, but uh, I, I kind of have the opposite belief, and that is while we're going after evangelism, we actually creates the need for discipleship. So student going out uh, into their own campus, their own club, their own community, their own church, and 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 trying to witness, trying to share the faith that they have in Christ, um, they encounter people that have actual questions like, I don't really get that. And sometimes the students, even though they're Christians, they don't know the answer, and it drives them back to the church. It drives them to mm. the point where, where they need uh, mentoring. They need that discipleship. Um, to hear from their youth pastor, youth leader. Um, so really, I saw just even in my own students early on that they weren't, uh, they, were, they were motivated by the mission trip, they're motivated motivated by the camp, but it didn't really have any transformation um, taking place uh, to, to come back home from that trip, come back home from that camp, wouldn't see them, see them live it out practically. And so when I was exposed to Dare to Share, it just kind of really spoke to uh, my core thing that I was trying to teach the students, and that was uh, to to really go after their own campus, their own community, um, in their own Jerusalem, not just overseas, but right here. And so I began going to Dare to Share, inviting others from my network to go to Dare to Share, and really saw um, students equipped with uh, practical ways to do it, not just over there, but but right here. Nice. Well, all right. So that that kind of touches on the the personal component, but what about the event itself, like and there's a lot of events. So yeah. what about, and there's a lot of events that do great training, but what about yep. Dare to Share makes it different in your mind? Yeah, well, Dare to Share is, is driven by biblical content um, and uh, contextualization to the team. And so uh, it's it's not about the fluff. It's really going to be driven in, into the Word, through the Word, by the Spirit, um, and then given practical ways for these teenagers to actually apply it right here and right now um, whether it be through Facebook, Twitter, um, or on their own campus, um, I saw a lot of a lot of uh, other conferences that just really kind of drive the emotion. Um, and though there's the emotional component to a Dare to Share through worship, through skits, through um, you know hip hop or whatever it's going to be to to kind of draw in some of those students, it's always going to be coming back to the content of of Scripture, um, reliance upon the Spirit. And and uh, given the opportunity to to go out and do something right there, right then, um, and so that's always been a draw for me. Mm. So when you did bring students, though, what, why were they, or as a group, as a whole, what was the kind of the switch that you saw, or or how are they different after the event? It's a great question. I think that uh, I think that it would just hit them differently than a typical camp or retreat, um, where where they're able to see that it's not just them. You know, if we take our own group, you know, of 100 to 200 to a camp, um, there's a little bit of the holy huddle type feel. But when you're there with with two or three, four or five thousand, five thousand other people um, and seeing even people from their own campuses that are go to part part of a different youth group and and stuff, there's a there's kind of a a positive peer pressure there that they feel like, you know, I kind of feel like going back to acts that, you know, they, they have the the 120 in the upper room, it's not just Peter and John that are saying, we're going to go out. Oh, it's sure, 120 yeah. praying for and all mm-hmm. of them going out, knowing that they're united in purpose. And so I saw students just kind of walk away from that, um, just with a kind of a, a unity in the body for the city of Seattle and saying, all right, we can go out now and we can make a difference now in our own, uh, in our own Jerusalem, in our own place. Nice. Well, that's good stuff, man. Well, that, that was a quick little thoughts from you, but uh, definitely just appreciate it. And maybe if there's youth leaders that are kind of on the fence, um, you know, thinking about a different event or thinking about just not going because of, of cost or, or the commitment or whatever, or not necessarily having seen it before, or because we've been a year out of Seattle now coming back, um, maybe, or a couple years out of Seattle now coming back, maybe it's just that little thing that can help them to go, well, this actually is worth it to me and this will be worth my group going. So 
Just yeah. thanks. Thanks a ton for sharing. And uh, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you when we do come up to Seattle this year. You'll see me for sure and, and many from my networks as well. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot. Yep.